Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, I got Zach in here working on a big Montana fifth wheel. Customer was driving it down the road and clipped the back end of it and ripped the back end of the camper off. And so you can see what Mr. Zach's got going on right there. But as you can see, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So he's got a new wall. The wall's right here. We got to put all the new wall in there. And so right now he's just trying to get it all demoed off the back of it. So we'll do some more video as we get into this more, but you can see right there, that's pretty much a bad deal right there. So all the damage had happened right there and it destroyed all that. So about the easiest way to do that is put a new wall on it. So we'll get some more as we get through with this. What's it looking like, Mr. Zach? We get it. Slowly, Mr. Oh yeah. Got little, uh, got little braces. I'm sorry. There's one right there and then <laughs> my finger don't work. There's one right there. Got to get all that stuff lined up. Looking pretty good. Looks like a mess to me. It's coming together pretty good, looks like. All right, I'm going to leave you to it. Well, good morning. Got a few things we're going to go around and look at this morning. Got, got some projects today. We got to pull the slide out of that one. Got a uh, uh, outdoor kitchen that got water in it, and the floor is all sagging. It won't go in and out. And then we've got a roof around back that I'm going to take you around and let you look at. And then, of course, a uh, big one in the paint shop, big fifth wheel that they're putting the uh, whole rear wall in. So let's go around and look at this stuff. All right, so we got this rockwood right here, and I'm going to take you up here and let you look at this. Came in for a whole bunch of problems, but in particular, this right here. And so we see this very, very common in a lot of these RVs. And so, you know, when they put this roof on, this hard edge, they didn't even put nothing over this. Um, and so that hard edge going down the road and you can see they've had trouble with this for a while. So going down the road, that hard edge has gone in there and cut that material. And so now this roof is just, and you can tell the water has been in there for a while, but yeah, all the way down this edge, this material has just failed. So yeah, it's just the wrong way to do this. Now, when we do this, we'll put a nice angle on this and tape that real heavy. And of course that extreme material that we use, this won't happen. This rubber, rubber's just a bad deal. It's not the way to do this. So we'll show you more as we get toward into this, but this is what's going on with this one. So let's go over here and look at this wall that Zach's been looking at. It looks like Mr. Zach's got most of this wall tore out of here. You can see pieces of it there and pieces of it here. And he's got the actual inside portion of the wall already restructured and put back in there. So that's coming along nicely. And then this piece right here is the big outside portion of this wall. He'll be putting back in there here in just a little bit, but yeah, a little bit of work in getting this all put back in here. See a lot of this stuff had to get moved out of the way, but yeah, look how nice that looks. Getting that all put back in here. A little bit of a, a little bit of a chore. So all the stuff you got to take out to get to that. So yeah, that was fun. So yeah, we get further into this. We'll show you some videos of the wall going on. All right, James and I got this uh, slide out of this and you can see how badly this was. This is the problem. So yeah, this whole thing, <laughs> you watch this, this whole thing. I mean, this is ridiculous. So we're gonna go back with a nice piece of birch and then we're going to, there's the radio again. And then we're gonna go in here and wrap that with metal. So do that, but I gotta go answer the phone and guess who I found right there working. Got this roof all stripped down. Now here's what I was showing you guys this morning in the video, look at that edge right there. So how are you gonna keep that material? And this is on a lot of RVs that we find. This material is gonna get over this edge and this thing moving going down the road is cutting that material. So we're gonna take and solve that real quick. Uh, so I have more here in just a minute to show you. So the nice high edge that we have, took a grinder, see now I've got that at the same level and it's got this nice angle on it. So now the sharp edge is gone. 
And that's the only way you can keep that from cutting that. I don't know why they don't do that from the factory. I guess just quick build them and gone, but this is what you got to do to make that right. Now, come back from lunch. It's going to get everything blowed off. We'll reseam all the tape and then we'll go down to all the edges and he'll be ready to start laying material. Brandon's got the seams all taped up. Now that edge is now protected real good right there. We've ground the corners of that so it's nice and smooth. So no more of that. So he's getting his glue up here now. He's gonna coat all that glue, put all the glue on here. And then we've got this Carlisle 45 mil TPO we're gonna roll down on this. This is heavy duty stuff. So this roof should last the length of the life of this camper as long as they maintain it. But no more of this tearing going on right here. So that's gonna be solved. Should fix all that. Looks nice. James and I have got this floor beveled out with this one inch birch wood and then we took the metal and wrapped it. You can see that right there is actually gonna wrap around the front of this. Got all the corners bent. And so now he's putting the red glue on there and then we're gonna spray this side with red glue and then we'll put the panels on there and that'll keep that, keep that basket weave material out of there. It should keep all that, seal up all the corners. Should keep all that from leaking water in. Over here on this Cougar light now, we got the floor all, panels all glued on and everything's good there. But right here where this floor was so bad, we had some issues with this. So I'm gonna have to go in here and see if I can resolve that, get that put back in play. And then James is over here right now, getting the, getting the floor secured. And you can see how nice this turned out with the metal wrapped it on across there. So you gotta put this thing on here. He's got to put these trims on here and get all that sealed up before we put it back in, but we are close. All right, been a busy day, so let's go around. We'll see what all we got finished up here today. So got this one right here, this uh, Cougar. You saw I was trying to, got the slide put back in that. Brandon's going through, doing all the sealant work on that. Uh, Mr. Fish on this Rockwood. You saw I was putting the roof on, had to put that universal ladder on there. So getting finished up with that right now, that's the only thing left on it. And then I've got Mr. Lewis in here working on this old Airstream. I'm gonna turn this around. Lewis has been, working on this Airstream and we had to put down this new floor and we got that done. He's got the ceiling out of it. Uh, customer wants an air conditioner put in here. So we found the 110, but we also ran a new 110 over here so they could add some more power to that. Uh, got a little bit of the plumbing we got to straighten out. Did add a new uh, Suburban uh, SAW6DEL hot water heater because the Atwood uh, gas only was a problem. And then Mr. Lewis has got the new converter mounted and he's just terminating the wires, getting all that done. Still got room for his coat rack and all that. Got the plumbing all checked there. So coming along real nicely on this, making some good headway on this. And of course the big oak knot, we did the video a week or so ago with the outdoor kitchen. Remember we did the floor in that. So had blowout damage. So Mr. Zach's over here uh, getting the new j wrap bent and built he's got he's got it all tore apart doing that and then the uh trying to get that done right quick he's got this one in here with the uh with the floor with the back back wall that he's got replaced but there's the j wrap so we buy that stuff and white ionized aluminum and then 
Zach makes a template, gets it all cut out. Homemade, baby. Homemade, yes. Man. And then once he gets it all cut out, trimmed and built, that's what this machine is for right here. Puts that in the machine right here. And of course that'll roll it all nice, gets that nice bend to it. So, and then there's the, there's the aluminum after he cuts it off. But yeah, make our own to do that. But kind of getting that finished up. And then we've got another one back here that's got to have a roof. And it looks like Mr. James has pretty much got the corners pulled off, got the turn bar pulled off. So making some good progress. We'll look at some more of that here after a while. All right, working on a little Damon Daybreak right here. Came in with some hydraulic jack problems. And so we got to doing the diag on it and found out that the uh, control pad was bad. And so this is the old old style. You can see the plug on the back, it's a little four pin plug. The, uh, the This is the old style. So it, we had to replace it with the newer style, which has a totally different flat four pin plug. Um, LCI does, there's the plug right there, actually has an adapter plug that uh, you can use to adapt that. But after we did the, the, the adapter plug on it, uh, we found out it still wasn't working. So we actually had a, a new wiring harness in the bag. So we went out and plugged it in, everything worked. So found out it bad, bad touch pad and a bad wiring harness. The, uh, you can see right there, the uh, controller's right there, wiring harness is right there. And then Mr. Brandon, is up under here got to pull that got to pull that new wiring harness all the way up through the firewall down through the dash and obviously mounts up in there so there's the new one you can see with the uh new style plug like i showed you out there a minute ago so got the uh got the new touch pad get it put on new wiring harness we've already calibrated it and got it set up while we had it down here. So we'll go ahead and pull the new wire in there, get that put in there, and then uh, retest the calibration on that. Should get us going on that. Back here working on this Oakmont. Looks like uh, looks like he's got the, uh, we had some blowout damage on that. And Zach has got, saw in the other video, Zach had to make that new J-Rap to go across there. So he's got all that made and bent. And got the new fender skirt on. So got that all done. So that's all wrapped up and ready to go. And then I want to show you this roof back here you saw me that's my radio again so mr zach's got the wall and he's laid the old one over the new one because he's got to do a little trimming for the window and then he's ready to go in with it going with that and then i want to show you this roof that we were working on you guys saw where we had it all pulled apart and he was getting ready to replace the wood in it he's got all the wood replaced in it now so we actually had a little bit of a tree fall on it and this metal got damaged across here. So Zach had to bend us some more of that on our bending machine. But the bad part was this thing was stapled. You can see these big staples. This thing was stapled about every, I don't know, 10 inches or so. So I actually got up here with our staple gun and I've got it stapled about every one inch just to give it, so it don't, doesn't try to pull up through there. But they got the new wood on there. Got the radius is all put back on here, nice and neat. Everything's taped. So we're gonna start putting rubber membrane or TPO back on it in the morning. So coming along. We got James in here working on a Zinger bumper pull camper. Had soft, a uh, little bit of a soft floor. So show you what we got going on here. He's got the LVP up, and then he's going in here rebuilding the framework in there. It's got some issues, so we'll get that all done and then relay the lvp down in there so more later all right got the new extreme roof rolled on this so they got to get all the turn bar put on here but see with that metal we sat we had on there so now it's rolled on there real nice so cleaning up fixtures and get them put on next so i've been working on a little uh dometic dlfm furnace here so this furnace is a 24 volt park model and so obviously 120 volts in and then there's normally a transformer right here that steps the voltage down to 24 volts um, and so the mobile service guys brought it back yesterday from a park model that they were working on 
and uh, it just wouldn't it wasn't uh, just wouldn't come on at all so I got the test in the transformer and the transformer was only putting out like five volts so got cousin Gary running over to the heat and air supply house because Dometic does not offer that as a replacement part so I got him going down to the local supply house to try to get us a uh, standard 120 to 24 volt uh, transformer and then we're going to retest this all right so that finishes up this week here at Shelburne RV hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, be a couple weeks before I get my next video out. I hope everybody has a good, safe, and happy holiday with their family and friends. And remember that this video is Cousin Gary Approved.